stockviews.com, the community for serious investors. So our next lesson from Stockviews Campus, how growth and ROIC drive value. Unfortunately, there's still a huge amount of confusion amongst practitioners in financial markets over how value is created exactly. You'll often find that company management, and for that matter, Wall Street analysts, focus excessively on earnings or growth in earnings. The problem is that growth in earnings is a very poor proxy for value creation. And this leads to a lack of understanding as to how the company can add value over time. Here's a very simple diagram which is taken from the McKinsey book on valuation, one of the best reference texts available on DCF valuation. We calculate value by discounting future cash flows of a company at the cost of capital. The cost of capital reflects the fact that tomorrow's cash flows are worth less than today's. That's because of the time value of money and also because of the riskiness of those future cash flows. In turn, future cash flows can be determined by reference to two fundamental drivers, revenue growth and return on invested capital. Let's now take a look at two very different companies, Flashy Co and Steady Inc. Both companies are generating earnings of $100 in their first year. FlashyCo is high growth, but it generates a relatively low return on capital. In contrast, Steady Inc. has quite modest growth, but a higher return on capital. Using revenue growth and return on invested capital, we can work out what's called the investment rate. This is simply the proportion of earnings that need to be reinvested back into the business in order to fund the future growth of that business. And it's calculated using this simple formula. Investment rate equals growth divided by return on invested capital. This formula links all three variables. So if you know any two of these variables, you can work out the third one. In this case, we know what growth is, we know what return on invested capital is, so we can work out the investment rate. So let's now go ahead and work out the investment rate for Flashy Co and for Steady Inc. We can see that Flashy Co has a much higher investment rate. Because of a lower return on invested capital, the future growth at Flashy requires far more capital to fund its future growth. It's more capital intensive. Using the investment rate, we can then calculate the net investment required in dollars. Then, by deducting this net investment figure from the earnings, we get to the free cash flow for each business. If we assume that growth and return on invested capital remain constant, we can use the well-established formula for valuing a growing perpetuity, which is value equals the free cash flow in year one, divided by the weighted average cost of capital, or WAC, minus the growth rate. In this example, let's go ahead and assume a WAC of 10% for each company. Plugging all the numbers into this formula, we see that Flashy Co is worth $1,000, while Steady Inc is actually worth slightly more at 1,125. So slow and steady, wins the race. Despite the fact that Steady is growing more slowly, it's actually a more valuable company then because it requires less capital for a given amount of growth. We can further refine our equation here on the right by defining free cash flow in terms of the earnings less the net investment required for growth. That is earnings multiplied by one minus the investment rate. Let's go even further then by redefining the investment rate in terms of growth and ROIC as we did earlier. Using this equation, we value a company based on its earnings, its revenue growth and its ROIC. This equation is called the key value driver formula and is otherwise known as the Tau of corporate finance because it reduces valuation to just a few key components. Of course, this formula is rarely applied in practice because growth and ROIC rarely remain constant. However, understanding this equation is key to understanding 
what drives valuation, and it forms the foundation for creating full DCF models later on. If you want to apply some of the lessons that you've learned here today, then check out stockviews.com and start contributing your own analysis on the stocks that you like. Stockviews.com, the community for serious investors.